The Taliban is taking over most of Afghanistan now that Europe and the US have almost completely withdrawn from the region. It's gotten so bad that we are now actually sending back emergency units like special forces to exfiltrate the remaining nationals that we have living there. At the same time, Denmark, Germany and Greece and other countries are beginning to force Afghans living in Europe to return to Afghanistan, stating that it's pretty safe to do so. There's also reports coming out about this whole mess potentially triggering a new migrant wave heading for Europe and Europe just cannot take that right now. So what's going to happen from here? You and I will take a look at that in today's video. All right, welcome to the channel, guys. So there's a lot of things happening right now between Europe and Afghanistan. So I want to start out with bringing up two stories that kind of illustrate well the raw confusion and the lack of a unified plan for the whole mess. So check this out from Euronews. The UK and US to send troops back to Kabul, the capital of Afghanistan, to get nationals out amid Taliban onslaught. The British and American governments are to send thousands of troops to Afghanistan to aid their nationals still in the country amid a Taliban onslaught that has seized more cities and ter uh, territories from Afghan forces. So the UK right now is about to send troops back to Afghanistan. The same goes for the US. The UK has committed to sending 600 troops back to Afghanistan. That's a substantial force. Most of these people are troops are going to the to Kabul to to uh, make sure that all of the nationals are safe within Kabul to get them exfiltrated to get them home uh, to their countries. Right. Uh, the US is planning to send another 3000 troops <laughs> to to the same area to for this with the same objectives for US citizens, but also people of like uh, the rest of Europe and so on. So I think that everyone was hoping that the Afghan government would be able to resist the Taliban on their own. But in reality, that was just never going to happen. The Taliban has now taken over huge areas of all of Afghanistan. And maybe the most important news is that they've taken over this province near Kabul. Kabul is very important since that's where a lot of the remaining European nationals live. They say it's safe for now, but the Afghan forces are losing ground to the Taliban and losing it very fast. Look at this. The Taliban capture new Afghan provincial capital near Kabul. And this uh, provincial capital is very important because it connects a lot of roads to Kabul. So effectively, it's one of the ways that you would leave or flee Kabul if you're one of these many European or US nationals who live here, right? So this people take this as a sign that the Taliban is moving in on Kabul itself, that they're trying to actually surround the city, take over strategic points and then uh, eventually move in and finally overtake the whole city. And if that happens, then, well, that would be the effective end of the Afghan government against the Taliban. And we would officially, with our intervention there, have made it worse than it was two decades ago when we began moving in. So we know that we messed up, right? Like the US and the EU are now getting desperate because we understand that the Taliban is, is about to perform a complete takeover of all of the country, which is why you're beginning to see these statements from our officials being like, in the beginning, they were very demanding to now being like much more careful. Take a look at what Saki, Biden's press secretary, had to say about this. The Taliban is clearly on the march. Your objective is to have a negotiated political settlement. What, what, what gives you confidence that the Taliban is interested in that? Well, the Taliban has to make an assessment. One, we have also said that there's no question that the Afghan National Defense Security Forces would be strengthened, as would the Afghan political leadership, uh, if they were to have more success in fighting back. There's no question about that. Uh, we're not hiding from that in any way, shape, or form. The Taliban also has to make an assessment about what they want their role to be in the international community. They have to evaluate their role in the international community. <laughs> I mean... What happened to we don't negotiate with terrorists? I, I mean, I know that was always just something that we would say, right? But, but this is a radical change for the US government in how they speak about the Taliban. And by the way, the EU made a press release as well saying that the EU calls on the Taliban to immediately resume substantive, <laughs> regular and structured talks and also calls for an immediate halt of the ongoing violence and for a comprehensive permanent ceasefire. Good freaking luck. 
Uh, why would they care? They're getting everything that they wanted for the last 20 years and we're pretty much handing it to them. I'm not even blaming Biden because I, I think that we should have never been in Afghanistan to begin with. So withdrawing the troops I, was always something that I was going to support. But if you withdraw, how about you at least take your military supplies with you? Like there's this video of the Taliban driving around in US military jeeps with like mounted machine guns and everything. Talk about screwing over the Afghan government. It's just like, see you guys. Uh, oh, and by the way, you know, the enemies that we helped you fight, we just kind of left all of our weapons to them. So, uh, so good luck with that. Now, a few days ago, some countries in Europe made a statement that they would be forced sending back Afghans to Afghanistan, right? So uh, look, I'm all for sending migrants back to, to the countries they came from, but their countries, they have to be safe first. This just seems crazy, right? Like the US and the UK are sending thousands of troops to defend Kabul to make sure that it doesn't get overrun by the Taliban. And now Austria, Belgium, Denmark, Germany, Greece and the Netherlands have written to the European Commission claiming that halting returns sends the wrong signal and is likely to motivate even more Afghan citizens to leave their home for the EU. This seems a little crazy, right? Like it's weird because normally I'm very much for tough immigration laws and sending people back to the countries well, at least once it's safe, right? But we're talking about sending them back and hopefully this is to Kabul. Hopefully it's going to be a place that where there's actually some kind of protection. But even Kabul in a matter of just a few weeks could turn, could turn into a literal war zone. Absolutely pure madness. So another big issue in the news have been about these Afghan translators, right? These people who have helped all of the European nations and the US at the embassies, but also at a local level at the, at the risk of their own lives have helped uh, all of us gather like intel, translating and so on. So I was reading some news about these people actually in Denmark being granted residency so they wouldn't have to be sent back along with all of these other Afghan people. This article from Euronews describes that very well. And um, I, <laughs> I know I'm bringing up a lot of Euronews articles, but I promise you they're not paying me anything like <laughs> at all. Uh, but it's talking about how Denmark is offering to, to all of these people um, that the offer is open to Afghan nationals that have worked at the Danish embassy in Kabul and or as interpreters with the with the country's troops. So I think uh, we're talking about around 45 families here that are granted residency in Denmark. Uh, the, the people, the 45 people along with the families. But I do think it's it's a really good step to award people that have helped you in the region. Because imagine imagine when an occupation power, like you're helping this occupation power in your country, and all of a sudden they decide to leave for whatever reason that you probably don't even understand. You've been working with them all along in your own country and, and probably in the place that you live in, translating, even maybe gathering intel. So imagine if you're that person and all of a sudden all of these military forces that you've been supporting are now leaving, right? The Taliban is likely to take over pretty soon. So you can only imagine uh, that these people will be in a lot of danger. These translators and intel gatherers and so on. They'll be in a lot of, in a lot of danger if we don't take care of them. That would be a really tough fate uh, and it would also ensure that next time we for no apparent reason decide to obliterate another country in the Middle East, we won't have as many people helping us. At this point, I wouldn't be surprised that if we before too long will have another huge wave of migrants coming into Europe from Afghanistan if the Taliban takes over and it's pretty much our own fault. If the Taliban is successful in taking over and they could very well be, there will be a sea of people coming to Europe from Afghanistan. Uh, Afghanistan is twice the size in population of Syria and Syria was enough to almost wreck some countries economy economies in Europe when we took in too many migrants. Imagine if you have double that amount, at least double that amount coming into Europe. So I think this is a good time for our leaders to do some light soul searching and ask themselves, what did we get out of invading another country in the Middle East? Did we have any lessons learned?
The one thing the US got out of Afghanistan was a huge opium crisis. Afghanistan is by far the world's biggest opium producer. And when did the opium crisis hit the US the hardest? Oh, the year the US took over Afghanistan, it looks like. And drastically increasing every year since then. Hmm, interesting. What a coincidence. So my guess is that our ruling class has learned nothing from this two decade long disaster. Our intervention into Afghanistan has been the US has got an opium crisis affecting like thousands of families. And uh, it looks like the EU could very well be overrun with migrant and migrants and refugees once again. So here's the worst part. I bet you that the people who still think it was an awesome idea to go into Iraq and Afghanistan, the, meaning the war-hungry politicians, I bet you those people are still hoping and planning for another intervention into the Middle East. Watch out, Iran. They're probably planning how to wreak havoc in all of your nation as well, or as they call it, install democracy. Thanks for watching, guys. Like and subscribe and all of that good stuff if you want to support my small channel. And I'll see you guys in the next one.